In this video, I'm showing you 10 things your iPhone can do that might surprise you. From cool iMessage effects to a super detailed weather forecast and even saving your parking spot. You're definitely gonna learn something about your iPhone in this video. So let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. First up is something called iMessage effects. iMessage can send what's called bubble effects and full screen effects. My favorite bubble effect is one called slam, and there are other cool ones too, like loud and also invisible ink. Full screen effects can be fun too, and can actually be toggled automatically by the system if you send a certain message such as congratulations or happy birthday. To see these effects, all you have to do is press and hold on the send button, and you can swipe between the bubble effects and the full screen effects. These have pretty much stayed the same since iOS 10, and I'd really like to see Apple include some more iMessage effects, as it really can bring some life to a boring iMessage thread. Next up at number two is captioning a photo. Sometimes it's convenient to add a simple caption to a photo so you can remember the moment better. There is a reason people used to write on the back of their print photos, and luckily today in the age of iPhone, it's way easier to do this. In the Photos app, all you have to do is swipe up on a photo and you can add a simple caption. There is no text limit here, so you can write as much as you'd like. And I use this sometimes when there's a certain memory I want to associate with a photo I took recently. So a nice little hidden feature inside of Photos. Coming in next at number three is for iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro, and 14 Pro users, and also for any iPad that has a LiDAR scanner. If you open up the measure application, you can actually point your camera at a person to get their height. You just have to make sure that the background is clear and their feet all the way to their head is visible in the frame. I had to jump into my settings and change it to imperial because feet and inches is obviously the better way to get someone's height. This is pretty fun to try and it's actually surprisingly accurate thanks to the LiDAR scanner. So if your device supports it, I definitely recommend trying out this feature. Next up at number four is useful for that person that always ends up forgetting where they parked. Funny story, I actually once forgot my parking spot when I went to go to an Apple store for a Genius Bar appointment. This feature I'm about to show you could really have come in handy for me in the moment. All I had to do initially was just tell Siri to save my parking spot and it would have saved me a bunch of time. Every time I park my car, I use Siri to save my parking spot. It only takes about three seconds and it can definitely save a headache in the future. And also the system can sometimes do this for you automatically when it detects you get out of your car. So if you forget to tell Siri to save your parking spot, you can try opening up Apple Maps and see if the system proactively saved your parking spot for you. Next up at number five is getting a detailed weather forecast. Many people will update their iPhones and new features are added, but they just never use these new features because they're so used to using their iPhone a certain way for so long. This can also be said about the new weather app in iOS 16 because it has a completely new design and introduces so much more useful weather data that many people should be taking advantage of. You can now tap on each individual section of the weather app and get much more detailed weather breakdowns. The ones that I use most include wind, precipitation, sunrise and sunset, and I also like to tap on each individual day so I can see what the temperature will be doing as the day progresses. So I'd recommend opening up the weather app in iOS 16 on your iPhone and you can get way more insightful weather data. Next at number six is for Safari. You can actually add a really cool looking background image for your homepage of Safari. When you open up the app, scroll down and click on edit. You can then toggle on a background image from here. You can choose one of the built-in ones or you can choose your own image. On a side note, I wanna know how Apple picks these images because we also have wallpapers inside of the home application, but this is a completely different set of wallpapers. So let me know your thoughts on these in the comments. Number seven is for Do Not Disturb. Do Not Disturb is a really nice feature except for one problem I have. I always forget to turn it off. So the system can actually help with this in a really nice built-in feature. If you press and hold on focus in control center, you can tap on the three dot menu and you can choose some options that will automatically turn off do not disturb for you either based on time or based on location. The one I use all the time is until I leave. This will use your location and will only shut off do not disturb when you leave that location. This came in very handy for me when I went out for a nice birthday 
dinner with my family, and Do Not Disturb was shut off for me as soon as I left the restaurant. Next up at number 8 is a relatively new feature called Backtap. When this feature first came out, the internet was all over it and praised it for how useful it was. It really is one of the best hidden features in my opinion, and I'm surprised more people don't use it. You can set up a double tap or a triple tap on the back of your iPhone to perform certain actions. I have a triple tap set up to launch Spotlight Search, but you can choose any shortcut you like. Some popular ones are Reachability, Flashlight, Control Center, and also taking a screenshot. You can also have a double tap and a triple tap set up at the same time. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments what shortcut you have set up for when you tap the back of your iPhone. Number nine is another hidden feature that isn't used very often by iPhone users. This feature often goes overlooked and I think a lot of people will find this handy. If you open up settings, search for LED flash for alerts. When this is turned on, the flash on your iPhone will go off if you have any notifications. For me, this isn't as useful because I usually have an Apple Watch on all the time, but if you don't have an Apple Watch and you place your iPhone face down, this could come in very handy because the flashlight on your iPhone is going to be pretty hard to miss if you have any notifications. And finally, at number 10, we have a feature called background sounds. This one is again quite hidden, so just open up settings and search for background sounds in order to find it. This is an accessibility feature that makes your iPhone play a constant stream of audio. And some people say that this can help them focus and also fall asleep. Personally, I actually use background sounds every single night as the white noise makes it way easier for me to fall asleep. This feature is very useful and I'm sure plenty of people appreciate that Apple has included this inside of their accessibility settings. The only thing I want is a sleep timer so it can shut off by itself, but other than that, it's a great feature that you should try out. Number 11 is actually going to be from you guys. I want you to head down into the comments and tell the community one iPhone feature that you use that you believe is underrated in the Apple community. After doing that, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time.